Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the RDX Sports Podcast. My name's Simon Head, and joining me on this week's episode is a veteran of the European MMA game, a man who has been around for what seems like forever, and he's looking to do great things in Brave Combat Federation. A man I've known for many, many years, Mr. Alex Lahore. Alex, how you doing? You're in a Nando's, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm in Nando's right now. Well, okay, Enjoying let's... A bit of, um, comfort food. And, What's uh, the order? What's the go-to order in Nando's for you? So, for me, the order is... I don't know if you can see. It's chicken thighs, boneless chicken thighs, with rice and some chips. Nice. And what's the, what's the spice starter. level, Alex? The starter, I have a hummus and pita bread. So the spice right. level is hot, obviously. Gotcha. Gotcha. And this is this is a nice little reward for you, right? Because went over yeah. to Bulgaria, had your latest assignment over in Bulgaria. That was your second, I think it was your second fight for Brave, right? And uh, that's two first round finishes in a row. You must be absolutely loving it right now. I mean, talk to us about that experience in Bulgaria first off, going over there, fighting a local guy. Uh, a guy on a good run of form um, who came at you pretty quick from the start um, yeah. and you managed to sort of weather that early storm and, and, and get the finish. Yeah, 100%. So, um, first of all, going to Bulgaria is something that I, I wanted to do anyway because I've got a friend that lives there and he keeps telling me to come for training and to see, uh, to see the city and the, and, the, and, the, and the actual country. And, um, yeah, just by luck, uh, Brave was going there. So, well, I told him that I was getting a fight down there. So, um, on my way there, it, it was good because obviously he was looking after us. Um, one thing that was good, it helped me keep my mind away from the fighting a little bit. After the weigh-in, we went to the beach, to the seaside, swim in the sea, um, had some nice food by the, by the sea before the fight. You know, managed to get my energy back, nice sun. Uh, yeah, the people of Bulgaria were very good really welcoming, uh, really friendly. Obviously, I knew uh, I wasn't going to be, you know, I wasn't going to have all the support because obviously I was fighting a guy from there. But as you know, I'm always the, the outsider. Everywhere I went, every, like, all, 10 years I've been fighting, I never really fought where I was born or at home. Obviously, UK is now my second home. So, you know, I class myself as also a UK fighter. Uh, yeah, I was actually from the UK. My kids were born right. in the UK, but five now. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so I was going to say that because you know you you fought a lot of your career over here in the UK, but as you say, you've always been fighting against the UK guys, right? You've always been kind of like the like the bad yeah. guy in the matchups and all of this sort of stuff, and and it's it's kind of a weird one because like you you carry three flags with you when you compete, right? If can you. For those who maybe aren't familiar with that, can you can you explain whose flags you're carrying and why for us? Yeah. So the flag that I've that I've made is it, a, a flag that represents me, who I am as a person, and who I represent. Um, who's created the Killer King, the the, the persona that I come out with. Um, so the first one is the first country is France, where I was born. Um, oh, no. Sorry, my bad. The first country is the Ivory Coast, where my parents were born, where my parents are from. And then the second country is France, where I was born. And the first, third country is uh, the UK, uh, England, where I was, uh, where, where I moved to and where I live now. And where I started MMA, uh, because in France, MMA wasn't legal anyway, until recently. So um, the opportunity that I've had to be able to uh, express myself as an athlete, uh, have the opportunity to show my skills, gave me obviously a job. Uh, so the UK, I have to represent the UK. And for that reason, I class myself also as a UK fighter because you guys gave me the, pla the platform. You guys actually were supporting me <laughs> from when I started. So... Um, yeah, I can only say thank you and only represent them as well, you know. Um, I wouldn't be the man that I am today um, without the UK, without, you know, London. Uh, as you can see, we're speaking in English. Uh, because of me living in the UK, I can now speak in English. I can go anywhere in the world and communicate with every, everyone. So, yeah, for that reason, I have to just represent, represent the UK as well. Um, I'm a really real person, you know. I, I like to um, 
to recognize, uh, yeah, recognize realness, recognize uh, people that help me becoming uh, who I am. So, yeah, that's why I carry the free flags. And I know it's difficult for people to, to understand, but really and truly, I don't care. They just have got to accept me who I am uh, and that's it. Yeah, and I tell you what, it's just as well that we are doing this podcast in English because my French is terrible. I've got, I've got, I've got Justin. I, I scraped my GCSE French, which to to to, to the huge surprise of my French teacher. But um, I've got yeah, nothing. Don't worry, got because, n- don't worry because the French are not the same with the English. They 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 don't speak no English, and and they're worse than the English. They don't even try. I cannot believe that for a second. But no, on try. on. <laughs> On the topic of France, obviously, like you're 35 fights into your career, right? You've 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 been around and done a lot. You know, you've won titles. You know, I think four different organisations, as far as I could work out. I think TMT, UCMMA, Fight Star, Bama, and that's when yeah. I first sort of came into contact with you. Was when you were fighting for Bama way back when. Um, but yeah, so you you know you've done most of your like your your competition has been, as you say, in the UK. And all that time in your homeland where you were born, MMA was banned. It's only just opened up over the last few years. Yeah. And you've not yet had the chance to compete in France yet. Is that right? You, you've not been able to compete legally in France yet. Is that true? Exactly. Exactly true. And, and I am hoping that Brave can do that favor for me and take me to France. I know they've got a show in November in France. I'm not sure where the location is, but that would be great. If it, if it's Paris, then it'll be, it'll be such a big show because all my family is there. And so it's going to be crazy. And it's not far from the UK. It's not far from London. So I, I always drive. I'm always in between France and, 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 and uh, in between London and, and, and Paris. So I know that it's very easy to get to. Get to. There's so many ways to get there. You can take your car, drive down there. You can... Um, take a fly 45 minutes you down there you can take the Eurostar uh, two hours you down there it's so easy to get to so yeah it'll be a show that well I can't can't wait for that day to happen I mean potentially just sort of looking at Braves roster if they're going to France you'd be the headliner right surely I mean that's that's either a title fight or a title eliminator surely 100%. 100%. We want a title fight, but yeah. if it's a title eliminator, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it is, we will be happy with whatever it is. <laughs> but a title yeah. fight will be the best. And but then we can get more hyped into the fight and we can, we can, yeah, we can be more excited for the fans as well. And have a five-rounder. Because as you know, I love, I, I love my five rounders. Man. I get better at the, as the as the round goes on. Well, brave the fans of Brave don't know this yet because you've not gone out of the first round yet. So, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you're getting it done. You're getting it done early each time. The thing I wanted to ask you, obviously, not having been able to compete in France is one thing. But has has the fact that you had to live and train and, and compete on the other side of the channel, has that meant that you haven't maybe been able to pick up that recognition and fan base that, that maybe some of the French fighters who are coming up now are enjoying, you haven't you haven't been able to benefit from that so much. I think probably the first French fighter that I saw really get a, a huge amount of French support was Morgan Cherrier. It felt like he had a he had a really sort of hardcore, dedicated sort of amount of fans who they sort of followed him wherever he went. But yeah. that was just as the sport was starting to just as yeah, the sport as you was know, I was, up, wasn't it? You know. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with that. Because as you know, I was um, also fighting on Cage Warriors. I also mm. fought for the Cage Warriors title against Nicholas Dalby, and obviously yeah. I lost the fight. Um, but uh, yeah, Morgan Sharia was one of the biggest one uh, with the most following as the sport was starting out. But there's many guys now, and exactly like you say, I feel like the French fighters because they do not know me. And they only seen the latest fights, which were not all of the latest fights went my way. So they don't really take me seriously. They don't really know about me. They don't really understand the level that I am at. Um, because my, my social media presence in France is not really big. 
they don't take me really seriously. So um, yeah, me going out there will be uh, will be good, uh, and also it's building up. Obviously now with the brave with the two finishes, they kind of um, have uh, kind of realizing that oh, actually this guy is, is not is not is not rubbish, you know. Yeah, and like something I've noticed, obviously being from the UK, and when the UK was starting to grow as an MMA nation, sort of sort of 10, 15 years ago or so, you found that a lot of the British fighters kind of all stuck together. They kind of looked out for each other a little bit on the way up. And, you know, yeah. they, they, they were sort of allies for each other. I mean, do you have any of that when it comes to sort of like French MMA? Are there any French athletes who you've got strong French, connections with or are you kind of an outlier in that regard? French people, French fighters, are not, they're not really team players, man. You know, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but there's a guy called Cedric Dumbe who just arrived, and he's more of a, you know, he's, a, he's more of a, call it like a, like a YouTuber, like a, you know, like a personality in France, and he fully disrespected me online, you know, and um, that was the uh, really, you know, it, it kind of put down the view that people had of me in France, and you know, it's um, yeah, it's a bit sad. Um, that French people are not, they don't stick together and they, not people fighters, sorry, they don't stick together and don't really, um, you know, help each other grow. Um, because it, it's a different mentality over there and everyone is for themselves. But I do have some French people, some French fighters who stick together. Um, I do get on with most of them, uh, like Dasu Dinimanov, for example. Um, uh, uh, there's one guy from Bellator that I get on really well. Uh, his name is Yves Landu. Um, who else is there in France that I get on with quite well? Um, well, there's the team from um, from US Metro. That's where I go to train when I go to, to in France. They've got uh, Morgan Chariot there. They've got um, Nora. The, the, the girl from uh, from the UFC. Uh, oh, the, Taylor Lapidus is someone that I get yeah. on well with. He comes up to London and trains with us sometimes at the GB uh, Top team. Um, and who else? Oh, his brother as well, Taylor Lapidus. Um, so there's a small group of you then. It's, it's the sort yeah, of thing that, small, you know, they've got an existing fan base. They've fought on the world stage. Some of them, like, I know, like Taylor Taylor and, and that, yeah. have, you know, certainly have. And Morgan's obviously there with the UFC right now as well. But, like, you guys could all help elevate each other, you know? Yeah. I also know Cyril Gann, but they just act like I don't exist. Like, they, right. They, they, you know, when, um, when that Cedric Dumbe guy came and started talking a lot of rubbish, he's got over a million and a half followers on the social media. When he came up and started talking rubbish about me, none of them have backed me and said, Alex, has been there for long. Like, he's been trying to move it. Mm. Everyone went quiet. No one said nothing. Everyone was just laughing about what he said and all that stuff. And it was, uh, it was a bit disappointing. It was a bit sad, you know, to realize yeah. that, you know, they didn't really really back me or really went on to defending someone that's actually done something instead of going with someone that's got just a lot of followers. You understand? So they yeah. were kind of scared of, oh, hold on, if I get involved, this guy's got so much followers, he might go, he might, you know, hit me back, you know, or bite me back if I say something or if I try to defend Alex. So yeah, everyone went quiet. So, but it's fine. I don't need no one to fight my fight. I'm a fighter, so I defend. I'm, I defended myself well, and I'm still defending myself well, and I'm still, uh, um, you know, making my noise the way I can make my noise and enjoying my journey. I'm teaching a lot as well to the French people, to the French fans about the sport because not none of them really fully understand the sport of MMA. They they're really just like fans of you know of who their fighter is. They don't really understand the actual game of MMA, you know? So, yeah. So the chance to potentially fight in a headliner where you can tell your story your way and then show them yeah. in the cave on fight night, that, that would mean the world to you, presumably, right? Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. That's exactly what I want to do. I'm a, I'm a, like I said at the start, I'm an original guy. I'm a real guy. 
I don't, um, I don't chase clouds. I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing what I enjoy. I just live out of my passion. For me, MMA is a, it's a lifestyle. It's, 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 self, it, 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 uh, it's helped me in my everyday life. It's helped me to, you know, uh, feed my family. It's helped me uh, grow as a man. It's helped me have um, discipline. It's, it's helped me in so many different ways that I just want to share with, with my fans and with people and even with people in France who came from the same background as me that, listen, now you guys got the same option as me now. You've got MMA that's legal in your country. I can start, do the sport, stay focused and, you know, drive, do the work and have a, have a goal and just go for that goal and you can become a, you know, a superstar or you can... Even if you don't become a superstar, you can still live off the sport, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, the, that's what I'm trying to pass on. That's the message I'm trying to pass on. Awesome. And talk to me about Brad Pickett and the guys at GB Top Team and how much how much they've been able to help you. Because yeah. I've known Brad on and off for a long, long time from back in his fighting days. And, you know, yeah. I always knew that he would be a great coach. And uh, yeah. it seems like he's built something really special down there in South London at that gym. He's got a new facility now, which looks incredible. Um, I keep meaning to pay it a visit. I still haven't actually been and paid it a proper visit yet. So I'll have to come and do okay. that soon. But but it's he's doing great things at him, Ash Grimshaw. And, you know, what's, yeah. tell us a bit about the atmosphere in that team and, and, and what they've done for you as a fighter. Yeah, because obviously the story of me and, uh, and DB Top Team is a little bit, you know, at the start. Because... I was from New Wave Academy before, and then um, Brad and Ash were from Team Titan. So it was like the rivalry from North London and South London. So it was a little bit, you know, difficult first to get on with like Brad and stuff like that. But once he came to um, South London and, um, you know, Team Titan stopped and I come out of New Wave and, you know, everything was fine. I kept on, you know, trying to ask him, like, can I come, can I come to the gym and train with you? Can I come to the gym and train with you? And it took quite a long time for Brad to say yes, but he finally did. So now it's been two years I've been training with them. And, um, yeah, it's great, man. The facility he's got is everything we need. Um, we've got everything there. Like, we've got a cage, we've got a ring, we've got two massive um, mat area. We've got... Um, a, a, a gym to do your strength and conditioning and stuff like that. We even got a, a podcast room and we also got like medic, medics or massage therapists and physiotherapists that are there available for us. It's got everything that a fighter needs. We've got saunas as well there. Um, that I couldn't, I would, like, I don't know if you're, if you're an MMA fighter and you live in South London and you're not a GB top team, then I don't know what you're doing because that's where everyone is. We've got guys in the UFC, we've got guys in Bellator, we've got guys in um, PFL, we've got young amateur guys coming up to train and we cover every angle of the game as well. So striking, wrestling, obviously Brad, Brad's wrestling game is, you know, is top level, obviously from yeah. the American top team. So yeah, it's, it's lovely, man. And obviously having all those guys that are all competing and fighting and different style, different weight class, and you're always learning every day and you're always motivated, you know, to do well. Like, for example, we've got Loni Kavner who did something incredible a few weeks ago on the yeah. Contender Series. And lovely, that was motivating to me, you know. I've seen, I saw Loni when he was like a, a little... 80 years old boy when I was still fighting in uh, UCMMA, you know, I see him grow and yeah, seeing that everyone improving and still doing their craft and obviously everyone is teaming up now and together and it's just lovely, man. And that's why I said that's something that's missing in the other side of the, of the channel. In yeah. France, they don't have that same you know, team effort. Yeah, everyone has to stick together, you know. Do you think that... Grow. Do you think that maybe in a few years, maybe once you've once you feel like you've done enough in the cage and you hang your gloves up, is coaching sort of moving into coaching as a as a as a job something that you would be interested in? I know you do you do uh, stuff on the side already, 100%, but is it something you've moved yeah. to? Hundred uh, percent. 
like I said, mixed martial art is 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 my is my lifestyle now. Definitely gonna be coaching and more <laughs> and more. I'll be definitely involved in MMA. That that's for sure. Um, I've got a little two years old son who's definitely got the fighting in him, man. I don't know what God's given him, but this boy is something else. <laughs> he's two years old. He looks like he's four. He's got abs. He's uh, his strength is crazy. Uh, I, or I think all my hard work that I did, like obviously training and um, you know competing and doing all my stuff, just went into him straight away. <laughs> like, he he was born with like everything. He can, he can do it all like already, and it's like for him it's just natural. So I can't wait to see. But I would not force him to be a fighter like me. I let him decide. But he he will definitely uh, train. That's a hundred percent. How did your I've spoken to loads of fighters over the years who say that something changes up here when they when they become a parent, when they've suddenly got a little person to feed, you know, a, a little person to look after, someone that extra that they're responsible for. It changes them as a fighter. It changes their motivation. And in a lot of cases, and you see this, I've seen this across all of sport, quite often when you see an athlete and they suddenly become a parent, they seem to just sort of go up a level. Um how, how how did you? I mean, have, have you experienced any kind of noticeable difference in how your how you sort of approach fights or how you how you process wins and losses now that you've got this additional additional person you need to look after in your life? Yeah, for me, uh, it's motivation. It's motivation. It's motivation to um, to be a better better person first of all, and it's motivation to do well. I don't really. I don't really um, focus on to winning and losing more. I just focus on doing. I just want to keep doing, keep active, and keep moving forward. Because obviously, MMA is a sport that is difficult. You can't always control if you're going to win or lose. Yeah. But you can always control if you're going to carry on or stop. So for me, it's just about keep going and keep learning and keep improving and keep uh, um Staying uh, um, focused and, and, and yeah, keep, keeping the drive and yeah. So definitely, my son has given me a, another boost. And obviously, having a, a kid and responsibility, yeah, it, it's definitely motivating and it keeps your mind focused. Yeah. Like when you when you feel like you're not going to training and you see the kids at home, you gotta go. And sometimes it helps because sometimes you wanna get away from them. <laughs> I know that feeling well. away from them, so you're like, okay, I'm going to training. Yes, that's my me time. But my son is good. That I take him to the gym. You know, Brad's got, like I said, the facility that he has is so lovely. And Brad's got kids as well, so he understands. And his, his son and and his daughter is always at the gym. So like, my son Zaki is always like playing with his son, with his daughter and his and his son and. You know, having the, the, the kids in the gym is not something uh, something difficult, you know. There's, yeah. The place is safe and it's good for him also to see what I, what, what I do and um, for him to get used to uh, the gym environment, see different people and yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. Awesome. And in terms of motivations, right, your main motivation competitively has got to be that super welterweight title for Brave, right? Um, yes, yes, yes. Before before we talk about that and the contenders, how much nicer is it that you can fight at one seventy five rather than one seventy oh. now? Those extra five pounds. As some, as you can tell by looking at me, cutting weight is not something I do, right? So, <laughs> um, but for some, as someone who cuts cuts weight, you know, like fighters sort of cut it's anything between like fifteen and twenty five pounds, depending on 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 how they go, right? Knowing that you've got that extra five pounds in the bank, so to speak, you haven't got to cut on fight week. How much yeah. easier does that make your job on a fight week? No, oh, it's so much better, man. That my body, my energy level, um, I'm less moody because <laughs> you know when you don't eat, you get you're moody and stuff. It's more manageable as well for my body type. You know, like I, I was um, a too small uh, middleweight and a little bit. No, sorry. Yeah, too small middleweight and a little bit too big of a welterweight. So all of my cuts were very difficult. 
you go down to, to, to work away. But I, I beat them and it was tough, but I feel like that weight class now is it, just perfect for me. It's, it's the right, it's the, it's, it's, yeah, it's the right, it's the right weight class for my, for my body type, you know. Um, the weight cut I did for this last fight on Saturday was one of the best I've ever done. I, I literally cut weight um, training. <laughs> Just going right. through over and over on the stuff that we was practicing previous to, previous to the to the, to the actual fight day. So uh, practicing the game plan, doing hard work with the coach, um, doing a bit of cycling. Obviously wearing a sweatsuit, but yeah. it wasn't draining as as much as when I used to do uh, the seventy seven uh, weight cutting. So hundred yeah. uh, percent, I'm really glad. Glad to be uh, in that weight club. Yeah, and it's a fun place to be, right? This, this, uh, just looking at Brave. That you, you seem to have like there's there's three of you. It looks like at the top end of that division, who you're all kind of vying for that top spot. Obviously, you've got Kamal Magomedov, who's got the belt right now, um, yeah. unbeaten. He's the guy everyone's gunning for. We've yeah. got yourself, seasoned veteran, been in the game, been around the world, traveling, fighting competing on all these different organisations, picking up belts, getting loads of experience. Then you've got someone like Eliezer Cabanza, who's like there. Clearly, Braves are very high on this lad. He's not as experienced as you, but he's coming through. He's getting impressive wins. He's got a big personality. Um, he's obviously he's obviously identified you as somebody who he, he, he thinks that he can have a, a rivalry a rivalry with on route to the on, on route to the belt. In, in those three know, but reality, reality. Reality and virtuality is not the same. <laughs> right. He's, he's, he, you know, he's a good athlete. He looks good. He's, um, obviously, MMA is not bodybuilding, but he looks good. And he's, um, he's had some impressive fights. But the opposition that he faced from it is not at the level the half face, for example, you know? Um, yeah. I still feel like he needs more experience and stuff. And he needs, but... You know, it's not up to me to decide. It's up to Brave to decide. Of course, if you're on a win streak and you keep winning and you keep uh, beating nobody, you're gonna feel like you're <laughs> you're you're something that you know. So that's why I was like, okay, just get some more fights, get a tough fight first, and then you can see. Yeah, I'm actually ready. Cause I don't, you know, I'm a person that you know, like I said, I'm real. Like I, I will, I don't want to just fight you just because the organization wants me to fight you. I want to have big fights. I want to have fights against people that mean something. Because, for example, me taking the fight against him, what does that give me? He's it's, it's a 6-0 guy who's fought nobody. I've got over 35 fights. What is people going to say when I beat him? Oh, he's not experienced. He's, 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 no, you understand? And yeah, yeah. Obviously, if it's the other way around and he, he wins the fight, because the fight is a fight, anyone can win, everyone can lose. Oh, you've lost again a 6 0 guy who's nobody. So it's like, okay, we can take the fight, but it has to be, you know? <laughs> you want some and upside, me, right? Yeah. Yeah, and for me, I don't see how he can even win the fight against me. I saw his last fight, I don't see anything special. I don't see anything. The only thing that I see is he's very, he's got a good physique. That's the only thing that I see. Right. He's got a good physique. I don't even know if his cardio is good because he's never done more than three more than three rounds. I don't, I don't know. So I don't know how. I don't know why even they want to make this fight happen because it's like it's just going to be a bad night for him. But um, that's why I keep saying reality and you know fiction is not the same. Um, it's interesting. So, yeah. I've oh, gone. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, for me, I just want him to have a bit more fights, man. It's not that I mm. don't want to fight him. I want him to face, you know, good guys and, you know, see if he's actually, you know, if he's actually uh, what he thinks he is. And then if he shows that he's doing good, then we do the fight. If that's what Brave wants. But me, I don't mind. Like I said, I want to get the title and then obviously in France and then next year, why not do it in Africa? Congo versus Ivory Coast. For the title defense in Ivory Coast, why not? 
you know? Makes a lot of we sense. Already beat Makes them, a lot we of already sense. beat them this year at the African Cup of Nations. <laughs> <laughs> so why not a second time? It's interesting, actually. Like Quite often you can tell a lot about what a promotion is thinking by the questions you get asked mm. after a fight. Um, yeah. Because obviously, quite often there'll be some joined up thinking going on behind the scenes and they want to put the chess pieces in place to make the fights happen that they want to, they want to make happen. And after you won um, in Bulgaria, they talked to you about the title. Yeah. They didn't talk to you about Cabanza as much, whereas they had done previously. Yeah. After this one, they talked to you about the title. So do you think that that means that they're now looking at you as the next guy? Um for Kamal or is he going to get a fight elsewhere first and then you have to take take the seat and be next in after that or because Paris isn't it's only a few sorry, sorry France is only a couple of months or so away yeah that would be that would be the ideal the ideal time and place for a title fight involving yourself given given that you're French right so yeah. is that is do you think that's what they're they're sort of starting to look at now and what they're you know potentially oh, yeah. aiming for I hope, I hope, and I think they are, but I'm not sure. I, I heard something that I think that Kamau is fighting in October to defend the title against someone else. I'm not sure right. about that. But if that happens, that means that there is a possibility that I will have to fight again in Paris against someone uh, that's um, in the title contention. Yeah. I don't know. But um, I can't really tell. I can't really tell what, what they've got in mind, but I think, yeah, they want, they're, they're definitely thinking of having me fighting for the title next because my first fight was against Martin Bando, who was yeah. the one that had the title before Kamal beat him and got the title. And I beat him in, like, for, what, was it 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Yeah. So, um, yeah, for me, I thought, okay, the next one will be a title shot, but I, I forgot. I told him that I want to stay active. So, mm. um they just gave me a, the Bulgarian fight. So, yeah, again, I still want to stay active. If you don't want to give me, oh, not if you don't want to give me, but if you, if they can't give me a title shot because I come out fight, I'm happy to take another fight um, just to keep myself active and keep myself going. Um, like I said, I'm a fighter. This is my lifestyle. I'm always in the gym. Um, and then, yeah, just, I just want to keep it going. Time go, time flies. We don't have two two lives. We only got one life. So let's let's go while I can. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Good. My body feels good. Uh, I've got no injury. Um, and one thing I'm proud of is I've never cheated in the game. I'm a hundred percent natural fighter. <laughs> yeah, That's so, good to know. A lot, of, so, a lot of people. Uh, I, I don't know because my last fight, I saw some pictures during the fight and there was uh, quite a lot of spots in my on my opponent's back so i'm just thinking hey, what, what's all that but um yeah yeah it's, it's not up to me to say like i've had so many fights with different guys you know like carlos mimola and so many different guys who are are what i would say or think that they're not actually natural they kind of cheating a little bit and 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 for me it's like no i don't want to cheat i want i want reality you know, like, if you're better than me, you're better than me. But to me, it's more, it's, it's more, it's more like being real and being honest with yourself and, and actually uh, um, working hard for what you want without cheating. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of fighting for Brave, you've fought for a lot of different promotions, right? So you've experienced different promotions do things in different ways and, you know, there's there's a lot of promotions out there that are doing good business. They've they've been long established. They're doing really well. What's been your experience of fighting for Brave? I mean, you're only two fights in, obviously, but how's it been? You know, how 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 do they treat you? What's the fight week experience like for you? Give us a sense of what it's like to be a Brave Combat Federation fighter. Yeah, so really and truly, it's it's great. Um, Treating me very well. Uh, there's nothing really I can say is negative about them, you know, it's like everything I ask um, they, 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 they help me with I, I can see that obviously they, they 
the, the, the main media side of things is not as experienced as some of the organizations I've, I've worked uh, with. And um, yeah, the promotion side, sometimes I think that like they, they can do a little better with that. But every, there's always a, an improvement to be made on, on anything. And it's up to us fighters and fighters like me to kind of, you know, take from the good stuff from all the organizations that I've been in and, and you know, ask them to, oh, what do you think of doing this? Or what do you think of doing that? Or, and, and they're always there to listen and they're always there to, uh, um, to uh, actually do the thing if it's right for them. Um, I don't have anything bad to say really about them. They, yeah, they, they provide everything we need. They keep us active. They have so many shows. And for me, that's the main and the most important thing. The media stuff is an extra thing, but for me, the main thing is they are, they have shows every month, every other month. And, and that's yeah. very important for a fighter to stay active and to know that, okay, I could be fighting in the next three months or I can be fighting in the next, you know, four months or I can actually be fighting. Because I know guys who are, for example, in Belaco who are just fighting once a year, you know, or once every two years. I've already had two fights and I've only been in the organization for less than a year. You know, yeah. and we were already talking about my third fight. So that's one thing that I really, really enjoy about them. And um, like I said, there's always room for improvement in, in everything, you know, people are doing and, and organizations. And uh, yeah. yeah, you know, the French people, they, they just, you know, like I said, they're just not, they're not literate a lot, but they always, you know, they're mourning about me fighting on Brave, saying that Brave is a small organization. And I'm just, cussing them because I'm like you don't know what you're talking about you, you arrived yesterday and you, you, you want to tell us what, what's what it doesn't work like that just open your eyes look see what's going on see how many shows they do see how many how many records they've beaten on how many shows they've made and how many countries they've been on in and everything that they're doing in the sport they're willing to even take the sport to Africa as well which is lovely like I have a lot of African supporters from the Ivory Coast who are more, maybe I would say more talented than me, but they don't have the platform. They don't have right. access to even do that, to feed their family, to, you know, and, and Brave is willing to do that, to willing to go to Africa, willing to um, promote the sport and help people, uh, um, you know, using their skills, their natural skills, their God -give, the God-given ability to uh, um, generate money for themselves and, and put on a show, show, show their skills. I think it's lovely. It's, it's a great thing. So, yeah, respect to them for that. And, and, and I'm glad to be part of it. I'm glad to be a brave CS fighter, man. Awesome, I did, man. You know, when I signed that, this contract, I didn't think I was going to be that happy. But really and truly, everything happens for a reason, man. I was That's asked, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more than, than happy with, with where I am now. Awesome. And I guess the next thing is to upgrade that status, right? From Brave CF fighter to Brave CF champion. That's the next step on the ladder, right? So, so you you sort of eyeballing this, this potential event in, in France towards the end of this year. Um, so tell us how you think the next the next six to twelve months, how how you want that to pan out in an ideal world. If you if Brave just sat you down and said, Look, Alex, we're invested in you. You're clearly at the top of the division. How do you want to piece together your next two, three fights? How, how, how would you lay that out to them? So for me, it would be title fight in France, November, and then maybe February, yeah, February, end of January, fighting in Ivory Coast, defending my belt. And then maybe fighting in, in Bahrain in maybe April, March, defending my belt again. And then resigning the contract, and then moving on and on and on. Maybe going back to Africa again. Um, yeah, there's there's so much more. Well, that's the, the the two fights that I want to do. Yeah. And then after that, there's so much more that we can do. Like I said, obviously developing Africa. And yeah, it's, it's there's a lot. So yeah, we need to do. The, like the next four five months will be title shot, title defend, and then maybe title defend again and then see what's next perfect so like 35 fights 
into your career. It feels like you're in a really good spot and, uh, you know, you sound and look really happy with where you're at right now. You're yeah, maybe one, one, one fight, yeah, one fight, one win away potentially from having a gold belt around your waist and being a, being a champion and uh, then maybe being able to fight on home soil, fight on African soil again. I mean, that would be that would be a pretty cool way to uh, to take yourself up towards 40 pro fights which is a big milestone in itself right yes yes it'd be a great achievement not not everyone gets to do that many fights and yeah i'm i'm, I'm excited and i can't wait to just do it because what i've got to do is do it you know because brave's got the platform brave's there and they, they're actually doing it they're not going anywhere so yeah it's sort of about me doing it and staying focused Ever. Brilliant. And how can how can the people out there follow you on your journey? How can they how can they stay in touch with you along the way? Um, I'm obviously on Instagram at the Killer King MMA, and then I've got also a Facebook page, Alex Lorey, the Killer King. Um, then obviously I've got my website, alexlorey.com, and uh, yeah, just on the socials really. And then um, yeah, that's it. There's this. Yeah, it's easy to. I'm easy to find. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hidden anywhere. And obviously, you can follow uh, uh, Brave Federation as well, because obviously I'm fighting for them. So every time I'll be fighting, they'll be resharing how to watch the fight, when the fight will be, and um, yeah, that's it really. Awesome, awesome. Well, look, I've really enjoyed. I've really enjoyed catching up with you, mate. And uh, I hope that Nando's hasn't gone completely cold while you've been. Yeah, it's saying. a little bit cold, but it's fine. It's good. You can whiz it up in the microwave later if you need to take it home. I'll give you a box. For it. It's all good. It's all I don't good. Think I'm, home. I'm going to finish it now. <laughs> Perfect. Well, look. Thanks so much for chatting to us. Um, for everybody yeah. else out there, uh, give Alex a follow on the socials. Uh, give RDX yeah. Sports a follow on the socials, and you can follow me as well. Seeing as you're at it as well at Simon Head Sport. That was the latest episode of the RDX Sports podcast. Big thank you to the Killer King, Mr. Alex Lahore. Make sure you follow him on his journey in Brave Combat Federation. And we'll be back to speak to you in a week's time. Yes, yeah.